This is Channel 4. Now Sir Dennis Foreman presents a tribute to documentary filmmaker Dennis Mitchell, who died in September, offering us a chance to see two of his most distinguished films, beginning with Quentin Crisp, a frank but quite matter-of-fact personal account of the life of a very flamboyant gentleman, and followed by Maryport, an affectionate visit to a small town up in Cumbria. That's a picture of Dennis Mitchell, a great human being and a great filmmaker. Now, you won't have seen his name on the marquee outside of cinemas, but anyone who knew him or knew his work over three decades knew that he was one of the greats, one of the great documentary filmmakers of all time. I'd like to tell you how I first met Dennis. I was sitting at home one weekend. I heard a radio program. It made me sit up. It was interviews with ordinary people, not an actor in sight. I wrote to the producer, one Mitchell, and he wrote back and we met. We went into a bar in Soho, and three hours later, when we emerged, I realized that whereas I had some vague idea I was going to interview him, because he might get a job at the Film Institute where I worked, I found that I'd been interviewed. He'd done all the, talk, all the questions and I'd done all the answers. Now this gave me the clue that Dennis Mitchell could make people talk. And not only could he make people talk, but he could pick the right people to put on the screen. He had a wonderful connoisseur's judgment as to who would come off uh, as a subject for a film. I can remember later when he was working for Granada, he had a school of young directors sitting around him, and he would give them a hard time. He would say, now, this person or this subject, what is the heart of the matter? And he would make them sweat and talk and think and get in there and follow his own example in getting to the heart of the subject. He also had a wonderful ear. He had a wonderful ear for the human voice. And I'd like to read you something that he said once in an interview. He said, I'd fallen in love with the human voice, really, the way people talk. It wasn't what they said so much as how they said it. And these you can't reproduce. Actors can't do it. We've tried. You can't reproduce it. The passion and the sadness imprisoned. Now, he was very good with music, too. And with the selection of voices and music, he made a film called Morning in the Streets. This was, first of all, a radio program. And he remade it as a film about two years later. We're going to show you a short snatch of that film. Well, anyhow, I'll tell you, they, they had a few hours sleep and they all went home. And at night time, they come again and they adjourned to a singing room here. So I said, oh, don't go out and get any more drink. I said, you've had enough today. You know, very well, you've got to go away tonight. Oh, he says, we'll get there some road or other. Well, anyhow, they went. And they took bottles of beer with them to the station. And he said, now, Mary, he said, if you have a little girl, call it Margaret. And if it's a little boy, call it Stephen. I said, all right. So he kissed us and he went away and we never seen him after he was killed at... I got notice to say he'd been killed. It was a four days bus, but he was killed, it seems, on the 12th March, New Chapelle. So they are... Uh... The wind stirs the leaves and, and the flags of the cenotaph as slowly these tributes grow at the very foot of the cenotaph. There are many wreaths to be laid this morning. said to me she thought that the budgie was egg bound and I said well we'll have to do something about it because it'll die if we don't I said have you got a book on budgie she said no so she sent the boy out to buy a book and we did what we could for it so she rang me up the next day told me there was no eggs rang me up the next day no eggs so I said to her well you you better take it to the university and have it seen to there so she said, oh, I can't do that. She said, it says in the budgie book, you've got to keep them in the one heat. If I take it out in the cold, it'll get pneumonia and die. 
So anyway, she got a vet in to have a look at it. And Shep, the dog, followed her in. And uh, he goes to the cage to get the budgie out. Opens the cage, the budgie flies out, alights on the mat, the dog jumps on it, and no budgie. He picks it up, the vet, looks at it, he said, this budgie's not egg-bound. He said, it's got a tumour. And with that, he just threw it in the fire. So Madge says, good heavens, she says, my lads will go mad. What did you do that for? He said, well, cremation is the most hygienic thing, madam. That will be seven and six. <laughs> <laughs> so that was morning in the streets. Now I want to show you an example of Dennis working on his home patch. That is, talking to people about themselves. He had this astonishing quality to make anyone talk. He made a large number of personal films. The subjects were scientists, politicians, and just private individuals. This is a very bizarre individual, a very interesting individual, and his name is Quentin Crisp. This is the window from which, on a clear day, you can see normality. <laughs> 